Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough of new hotness from Stonemaier Games. It is Red Rising. This is a simple card drafting game for one to six players. I'm going to be featuring the solo for today's playthrough. It is based on a novel series from Pierce Brown's sci-fi dystopian novels. This game doesn't immerse you into its theme. You don't feel like a character in the world. However, there is so much going on in terms of uh, characters depicted on cards, uh, the cast, they're 14 highly stratified society that represented in the cards. It does a lot to evoke the sense of the world. So if you are familiar with the books, there should be a lot of treats for you. But even if you're not familiar with the books at all, a very simple engine in which you are going to be crafting a hand of cards by drawing a card and discarding cards one at a time, sort of gin rummy style, but with a lot more gamer buttons, a lot more combos and things to manipulate on the board. Be happy to show you a playthrough after I get to the walkthrough of the basic rules of the multiplayer and then the solo. But before I get to all that, we are the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. You are on the YouTube. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We also have a podcast and we have a streaming channel. YouTube stream, we feature a lot of your favorites, including games like Marvel Champions, Marvel United, Marvel, 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 <laughs> and other games too. We also have a Discord channel. The Discord channel is free to join. That's right, you heard right. It is free to join. A lot of uh, outlets require you to contribute to Patreon in order to join their Discord or Slacks or whatever. We do have a, a Patreon and we would definitely appreciate if you could back at whatever tier you feel comfortable at. However, you can join the Discord for free if you want to join in the conversation about all sorts of co-op and solo, whether it's the new hotness or old classics that you think should get more love. Lots of people showing love to lots of games here at the One Stop Co-op Shop. So let me get to the walkthrough and the playthrough and then feature Red Rising. Welcome to a game of Red Rising. I have a three player game laid out. So this game does go from one to six. I will be explaining the solo rules after I explain the multiplayer rules. The other thing to note is that you might observe some of these metallic pieces right here, very snazzy. I uh, was provided that by uh, Stonemaier Games for this review. If you want the collector's edition, you uh, think you can get it from the Stonemaier uh, Games website specifically, uh, but there is a retail edition with downgraded components, but the same core gameplay. So the first thing you're gonna notice about Red Rising is that there are a lot of cards, tons of them. Look at the size of that center deck. There are 112 cards total here across 15 uh, different suits, and they all have text. Every single card has unique text that you need to ingest before you're able to play. So that's very overwhelming if you're either teaching the game to a new player or learning it yourself. I think the easiest way to start is just the idea that at the beating heart of this game, it's a rummy style game. If you've played Rummy, you know you have your hand of cards and you're trying to draw and discard, draw and discard until you can optimize your hand and make the best one. Here, you're going to be discarding a card first, firing off a power, and then acquiring a, a one of the cards either from face up or from the top of the deck. And that's the core, discard, draw, discard, draw, until you're able to mold your hand how you want. So then point scoring is going to come from two general areas. You have... The, the synergies that you're going to create with this, these cards, either from the points up here, and also you can proc some of these bonuses that are listed on the bottom. Points will also come from the board. When I discard and draw, I'm going to be firing off different sections here, uh, and that'll, that will progress uh, certain point scoring elements as well. So if I activate Jupiter, I'm going to move forward on the fleet track. Uh, the further I move, the more I score. If I fire off Mars, I'm going to get the Helium tokens. Uh, you know, pretty typical uh, gems right there, but a nice little uh, carry case for them. Uh, these are worth a couple of points each. Uh, if I go to the Institute, I'm going to grow in influence, which are these, well, the, the function of these cubes. Uh, if I have majority here, I'm going to have uh, my, my points here are going to be worth more, kind of a multiplier effect. So lots of points available. If I go to Luna, 
Luna gives me the Sovereign token, and that introduces the game's asymmetry. So every um, every player is going to have a separate power that generally works off of the Sovereign token. So you can go ahead and read that um, and get familiar with that uh, as you uh, play the game. So I'm a person that learns by doing. <laughs> so I'll only show you a, uh, a sample turn. So I have my hand of five cards, and I have a card here that says Lawyer. So I noticed that the this end game scoring is if it's paired with a judge, I would get 22 points. So already we're at 13. That's not bad, but 13 plus 22 is going to be on the higher end of what cards have to offer. So I happen to see a judge right here, and I want it. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, manipulate my hand to do that. So I'm going to play this Pellis over here. She's a blue card. She's a pilot. And I'm going to fire off her power. So her power says advance twice on the fleet track. Then all their players advance once on the fleet track. That's fine. So I'm going to put it over here. I, I just choose whichever uh, lane I want. And then I would move forward on this track. And then everybody else would move along one. That's fine. I would then take this card. Put it in my hand. I have now paired the lawyer and the judge. And I would fire off the Mars power, which is a helium token. So I've gotten a couple of, uh, you know, little point scoring over here. But also the long-term goal, I've constructed a tiny combo <laughs> to get this going. And as you can see, you know, you read all the cards and you're going to try to make this uh, as uh, synergistic as possible. There may come a point where I'm completely happy with what's in my hand. And I'm just kind of waiting for the game to uh, the end game to proc. Then I would just be able to, you know, draw, put a card down, fire off a power, and then kind of move the game along that way. How does the game end? When players reach certain thresholds, so like if a player reaches seven on the fleet track, if I have a player with seven influence tokens over here, and uh, another player has seven helium. Or if one player has two of those things that will proc the final round, it would go around, every player gets an equal turn, and then you add up the score. So like with this game's predecessor, Fantasy Realms, it has a score pad, and there's a lot of them, so, and you're going to be using the score pad every single time. So you're going to score the different categories. Uh, these are you know, power to the bottom of the card, the cards themselves, the fleet track, and you just kind of add up all of your points, and hopefully you have scored a lot, a lot of points. As I said before, uh, the game's um, points thresholds could be pretty high. You're going to be scoring in the 200, 300, 400, depending on how you do, how many players, etc. Let's get a little bit closer and talk about the Automa. So, as in any Stonemaier game, you're going to get an Automa from Morton Monrad Pedersen, which is usually a deck of cards. So for the most part, on the player side, you're going to be doing the exact same thing, discarding cards, drawing cards, uh, making your synergies. On the Automa, it is a little bit of a dumb opponent, but a strong opponent. So it's going to acquire lots of cards. It's not. It's going to ignore all the text. It's just going to have lots of cards <laughs> available to it. So an Automa's turn is very simple. You're going to pull from the deck, and you're going to do what it says. So it is going to uh, make but bring cards out of the central deck and, and then distribute them out so that'll be this top line and then it will acquire one of the cards and then either it will fire off a power which is what the star means or this will be blank and it won't do uh, too much it depends on what comes out of the deck so in this particular case i would bring out a card and put it on b uh, or put it on uh, luna sorry about that and then i would con i would actually acquire the card that is on b you see D, C, A, B, those are cards, that's variable, and it would put it in his deck. So because he's a little bit stupid and brutish, <laughs> he doesn't really care um, what's on the text, but he will acquire lots and lots of cards. Uh, Autumn is actually going to go twice, so I'd actually do that again. So then I would look, and that card would go there. I would acquire the top card on the A deck and then fire off that power. In this particular case, it's Luna. It doesn't have a, a character token. It just has this card, which says it just duplicates one of the spaces, which would be moving forward on that track. So going twice a turn, this will grow pretty fat uh, over you know, 20, 30 cards, and you'll count it up at the end of the game. 
Another thing to consider is this uh, odds and evens card. You will look at the offer at the beginning of the game, see uh, what has more evens or odds. In the particular case, it would be odd. So I would take that, I would put that down here. It will score more points the more odd cards it ends up in its deck. So that gives, as a, a flag for me as a player, try to deny it odd cards as much as possible, discard even cards, manipulate the deck so that I get rid of odd cards. The reason to do so is because uh, this will deck will get very fat at the end of the game. It will discard down to 20, only it will discard the non-matching card. So like it will take all of its even cards, discard them, and then count up whatever's left. So you want to try to deny it odd cards as much as possible in this particular case, if, and it's vice versa if, he, if the bot is going for even. So the bot is pretty cool. It's very simple to run. It's powerful, so you have to know what it is all the time. It will manipulate this offer so that you have to constantly worry from turn to turn about what is going to happen here. And also, uh, it threatens to take more valuable cards, so it's a flag for the player on which cards to take. Let's say you're deciding between two of them. You might just want to deny, kind of hate draft a card to keep it away from the Automa. And that is a solo mode for Red Rising. Let us get into the playthrough. So I have my hand of cards. The Automa has uh, its two cards and is uh, ready to go. I am not going to read all the cards. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this to uh, reading the relevant text from cards uh, to let you know of my decision spaces because there's just too much going on. So hopefully uh, that's useful to you. Uh, I begin with Apollo, mostly because I always play yellow. Uh, but the power is not bad. I can go first and last. So normally there would be an even number of turns, but Apollo can go first and last. Also, whenever I gain the Sovereign token, I can reveal and place uh, the top card of the deck in any order. So it doesn't really benefit me, but it does, uh, directly at least, but it does give you more options, uh, more cards to look at, which is always a good thing. More even, more odd numbers out that are currently, so the Automa is going to collect or score points off of odd cards a little bit more. So we're going to want to try to cover up those odd cards, get them out the way as much as possible. All right, so my first turn, uh, I will take the first turn as Apollo. I'm going to play Mateo. So Mateo says, move any card from this location to the top of another location. If it is pink, place an influence token on the Institute. Okay. So I don't have a, a strat that I'm working on uh, right now uh, or one card that's like, oh, I need to score this. So I'm going to work on just getting the little bits of uh, stuff going on. Let's move that back. Get out of here. That was from the run through. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I am going to put Mateo right here. I see a another pink and I'm going to be putting the pink. I'm actually going to cover the odd card over here because again, I don't want the Automa to get that odd card. So because I did that, I was able to place one influence. And I also can take a card from any of these uh, areas. So the card I'm gonna take is the Gardener. Gardener says, uh, if deployed directly on top of a violet or pink, I have two options if the, if the Automa doesn't eat those cards. <laughs> Uh, I would get another helium. So I, again, I'm trying to play a game where I'm kind of trying to get a, a little bit of resources from everywhere. And then once I, once my strategy kind of forms, I'll be able to pivot and, and deal with my hand more directly. So because I took Luna, that is the Apollo card, uh, it procs the sovereign token and I would get the power. Once again, I can reveal and place the top card of the deck on any location. Ooh, another pink, another even card. Excellent. Let us cover the politician. All right, Automa turn. It is going to put a card on top of C and then acquire the card on Mars and also fire off the power on Mars. They're both the same thing. Normally, I didn't go over this in the rules. You couldn't place a card and then fire off the power uh, somewhere else. Like you can't just place it and take it. Um, but the Automa can. <laughs> it is a dirty cheater. So then it's going to place on Mars and then it's going to immediately take the Mars card, put it in its hand, and then fire off the power. In this case, that is to acquire one helium. 
Next up, it is going to take uh, put a card on top of A and then take a card from the Luna pile. So put a card on top of A, of course, same thing. And then take a card from this pile. So we want to get the Sovereign token back and it is going to actually banish the top card of the deck. So uh, this isn't really helped the autumn. It actually helped me a little bit because I get a little bit more information about what is in play or out of play. So this is out of the game for now, unless I get a power to recall banished cards. And that's it. That's one turn of Red Rising. Let's keep going. All right, second turn. Uh, looks like I am going to do the Hollow Host. If you have more influence on the Institute than the player to your right, I have one to its zero, <laughs> taking advantage of that right now. I'm gonna give him the Hollow Host, which I uh, it's an even card, so it's not gonna hurt me too, too bad. But then I gain the top two cards of the deck and then end my turn. There are very few ways to increase your hand size from the original five to six to seven, but that's one of them. And so this gives me the opportunity to ha have six cards, which is a nice increased scoring uh, layout. So once I get to seven, that's it. Uh, I start to get negative points for eight cards and nine cards. So you can't just like grow your hand, but getting to seven uh, relatively early, having all those options, is gonna really help me. So I don't fire off any of these powers. Uh, I gave the holodeck or I gave the Automar free card. That's okay. Let's see what it does to me. Okay, it is going to put a card on C and take a card off of B. And then right there. And then it is going to banish the top card of the deck. It is Trig, uh, a gray security card. I have nothing that fires off of our combos with Trig, so that's okay. Goodbye, Trig. And then another one, it will put a card on top of B and then put a card uh, or take the card from the fleet area and it's going to take the fleet action. <clears throat> I don't like that at all. So then it is going to put a card on top of B, which is a gold card. Look at that embossing right there. And then it is going to take this card, find uh, the pink card, I'm, I'm okay with that, and then fire off the Jupiter power, which is progress on the fleet track. Next turn, looking at my cards, once again, a scoring uh, motif has not emerged, so I'm going to continue to get stuff. <laughs> so I have the Gardener. The Gardener says, if deployed directly on top of a Violet or Pink, move that card to the top of another location and gain one Helium. So uh, same trick as before. I'm going to place it on Theodora and move Theodora over here once again, covering Odd. Uh, did place it on top of a Pink, so I get one Helium. That's nice and I get to draw a card. Don't really love my options out here right now. So I'm gonna draw from the top of the deck. Ooh, an Artificer. I like orange because the oranges tend to be, you may treat this card as having the same name as any specific character. So uh, th this enables uh, better combos. So I'm just going to be happy with that. And then I'm gonna roll this die. I get the this bonus, which is the Sovereign Token and another card that comes out, CEO. And where am I going to put them? I'll put them right there. Autumn's turn. Autumn will place on top of B and then acquire B and fire off the power on B. All right, so then it will place there. It will acquire this even card. I don't mind that. And then the power, the power of B is to go on the Institute. It is starting to catch up, that's fine. And then, it will put a card on top of D, acquire uh, the card off of the Institute, and then fire off the power. So let's put a card right there. Uh, let's see, the, the what is this? The Mess Hall Cook, there you go, another brown. I like brown, that's not bad. Uh, take the card, the silver card, the CEO that I just acquired, and then another power. Man, have I uh, fired off the power uh, almost every time. <laughs> There are more cards that fire off the power than that do not. All right, so we are uh, going to the next turn. Uh, yeah, the decision space is uh, growing and growing, but I've decided to play the Stockbroker. Stockbroker says you may uh, lose one influence. I don't like that. Gain two helium. I do like that. So I'm going to place that uh, guy over here. Stockbroker. Uh, so I get an influence off. 
and I get two helium. Uh, it does have bonus, uh, give bonuses for helium, so I might pick that um, person up later if the bot doesn't take him. We'll see. And then I can uh, take a card from the other place. That will definitely be this card. So the reason I did that is because it's worth 25 points. That's a lot, uh, uh, at least as a base thing. And then 10 points if with Servo. I have the Artificer. The Artificer may treat this card as having the same name as a specific character. Hi, Servo. <laughs> <laughs> and 20 points if with another orange and a gold so they synergize off each other pretty economical little combo over here so i just need to look out for another orange and i'll get the benefit of this card too and if i get another gold this card will proc too there's just all sorts of good that'll happen um hopefully i can increase my hand size to seven and have even more room to score so then uh, the info, uh, because I took a card from the Institute, I get that influence back that I lost. All right, Automaton. turn. It will put a card on top of A and take the card off of A and banish the top card of the deck. So then 15, it got an odd card up. Oh, can't do too much about that. Uncle Neral, too bad, Uncle Neral. Oh man, you would have given me a lot of helium, but that's okay. And then it will take a card off of the of Lu or put a card on top of Luna, acquire the card from B, which is the Institute, and get that power. Man, it is head racing ahead of me on influence. I do not like that, but what are you gonna do? Beating me three to one on influence so far. I need to step up my game there. All right, next round, as you can see, the bot is getting lots and lots of cards. I am not banishing or doing anything. <laughs> I haven't gotten the cards to be able to, you know, manipulate the bot's deck. I'm just trying to limit the amount of odd cards that it gets at this point. Speaking of that, unfortunately, I have to do this. Uh, this is the Orator. The Orator is if you have the Sovereign Token, which I do. I can place one influence on the Institute, which is why I wanted to catch up there. So then I'm going to place it on the bridge, cover up an odd with an odd, and then I'm going to take the uh, the mess hall cook, who will eventually allow me to move up on the fleet track. That since I took that card, I'm going to move up in the fleet track right now. Uh, just kind of keeping pace with the bot. Uh, <laughs> I got influence and fleet track. Um, movement there. I'm pretty happy with that. So then it is going to put a card on Jupiter and take a card from Luna. So then there, ooh, Quicksilver. Ooh, look at that, worth 40. And uh, what else we got going on here? It will steal some helium, so I might want that. Uh, and then it is going to take a card from A. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> Uh, that type of thing I have oriented this way and it's going to use the power of Luna, acquire that and progress one on the fleet track. Right, second card it is going to put a card on top of the Institute and then take a card from A. So then it is going to put the Magistrate on the Institute and acquire the bridge and fire off Luna. So it does uh, take the Sovereign token and uh, progress one on the fleet track, which I had already done. All right, next turn. So I have I like these two cards and I have a bunch of crap <laughs> that I don't love so much. So let's uh, start getting rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to use mod job over there. Would be would be okay, but I have zero reds and no, no real access to reds either. So I'm gonna get rid of mod job and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a mod job on top of here. I'm gonna put it on top of the gardener. It is my job is going to move the gardener and I'm actually going to put it on top of the stockbroker. So I have some helium built up and I like the fact that I have some helium built up. So I think there are two silver cards that work off helium. I'm actually going to try to protect this card so that the automa doesn't get it. So that's the best that I can do. <laughs> uh, so that was my uh, card play down. And then for my card play up, I'm actually going to get this Quicksilver card. I think I'm going to end the um, game with more helium. So that, uh, so that will protect me, it will protect the 40 points over here, I like that. Hopefully I get a card that, that combos off of silver. And that allows me to progress on the fleet track so I don't uh, fall too, beh too far behind over there. All right, so uh, go ahead and follow my plan and get the stockbroker anyway, you jerk. <laughs> oh, well, it's actually gonna put cards on top of there. So it is going to put a card on top of Mars, 
the packs and take a card from Luna. So I'm gonna take Mod Jab, which I'm perfectly happy with. And then it is going to use the power on Luna, which is to acquire the Sovereign Token again and uh, move forward on the fleet track. I'm okay with that. I have to be. <laughs> and the next one is going to put a card on top of Luna. Ooh, orange. That's nice. Take a card from A. Oh, no! Don't take my orange. No! <laughs> and use Luna. So then it keeps the Sovereign Token and moves along the track. All right, next hand. Uh, yep, let's turn through the crap that I don't want. So I'm going to use a Data Specialist over here. If deployed on Jupiter, reveal the top two cards of the deck and place them under this card in any order. So I, it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna get a blue, I don't think. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to overview more cards. I want another gold uh, to, for the yellow one. I want a red, so milling through and seeing if I can get what I want. It is another gold and Helga, which is the uh, assassin. So it's going to go, oh, actually I should show you the Pax Al Telemanus. There you go. Is that, this is a defense card, so that's nice. Uh, okay, so put those all over there. And I'm actually going to top deck a card. I don't love my options here. Let's get, ooh, I needed a gold. I got a gold. Power, banish all blues from this location. Eh, that's okay. Uh, the points, five for each blue and five for each banished blue. Hmm, okay. Get busy banishing blue, Automa. <laughs> Worth 25 points though, that's nice. Roll that. Oh, nice, I get a little bit of catch up on the fleet track and let's see what the Automa does. Okay, it's gonna put a card on top of B and then acquire a card off of Luna. Man, it is, really loves to acquire stuff off of Luna <laughs> and just fly along on the uh, fleet track because it operated the power. And then it is going to put a card on top of A, acquire it off of C, and use the power off of C. So, sorry about that, a little fumble. Get, up, get out of here. Over there, Ooh, Jupiter's getting pretty crowded. Uh, acquire an uh, even card, so that's not too bad. And then fire off Mars, which gets me one helium. I'm actually not threatened by that because I have a, some helium there. All right, next turn. And I've had this card since the beginning of the game, and it stinks. <laughs> At least for me. Uh, this one says, you may gain Nero Odrofo from this location. Uh, and that's all it does. And uh, it would, you would get that card. But I'm instead just going to toss it like trash. Hide the... Um, the only thing it's going to do is going to hide an odd card. And I am going to top deck a card. Uh, ooh, okay. Bondius, a copper card. If deployed, uh, banish one non-gold card from this location. Eh, okay, sure. Uh, it does have some uh, extra points. That's not so terrible, I guess. <laughs> uh, so this is a banish. That means banish a top card from a location of my choice. This gambit did not quite play out. <laughs> I'm just going to banish the gardener. Get out of here. You were terrible. I don't feel like I'm doing all that great. I've kind of put my eggs in a couple of baskets. I don't know. We'll see if I can rally uh, at the end of this. So let's go ahead and get an Automa. I'm going to put a card on top of Mars and then acquire the bot is going to acquire a card from D, Artisan Chef, and fire off the Jupiter power, which it, it's going to be acquiring a lot of <laughs> Jupiter points. Not much that I can do about that. Put a card on top of A and acquire the card off of Jupiter. So get that card right there. And it does not approc the power. All right, next turn, I have Bondius over here. Just got him and I'm going to use him. So then if deployed on Mars, banish one non-gold card from this location. Bye-bye, odd card. You are out of here, you're fired. Also gets me access to the stock brooch, which I think I'm gonna want. And then I am going to top deck another card. A gray, I like gray because you may treat this card if it is any one other color. That's gonna be red. I need a red to fire off my orange. That's nice. What else does it do? Five for each gold at all locations. Some gold out there. 
Uh, so I think I might uh, hold on to this one. We'll see what happens. Put a card on top of the Institute. Take a card off of C. There you go. That's <laughs> my sacrifice of Bondius. Worked out, but it did get a Mars, uh, a Helium, which whew, I better not. I better uh, step up my game on Helium. See what happens. And then it is going to put a card on A. And of course, it makes a run that the stockbroker is going to acquire the stockbroker. Man, I really wanted that one. <laughs> I feel like I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> oh, well. Next round, I know I have uh, just got this and I said I was going to use it as a red, but you got to be flexible. I'm actually going to use it. This one says, uh, move a gold from any location directly under this card. I may get that card if I want. I don't want. I'm just going to move that card, cover up this odd, uh, put some fat cards here in the Institute, and then free up Mars. I've been wanting to get an actual red for a long time. I had my eyes on this. I'm going to get Dancer. And I'm going to fire off the power and maintain my lead on helium, which is important because I need this power. If any opponent has more helium than you, I get minus 30, so I need to maintain that. So if it's a tie, I still get it, but I always want to uh, be good on this one. I reshuffled the Automa deck. Let's see what it gets me. So I will put a card on top of Luna and take a card off of Luna. And fire off the power on Luna. So then it is Jofo. Jofo was uh, um, the pal of Alfram over here. So it's just going to get Jofo. Not too worried about that. But I am worried about the growing influence over there. And then, oh, sorry about that. It is going to put a card on top of B, which is the Institute, and take the Priestess off of Luna. And once again... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I, I did that wrong. It's going to regress on the fleet track. That's inevitable. It is, so it put a card on top of B. Ooh, an orange. I like that. Uh, take the card off of the Priestess, and then another progress. So I have to watch that. It has one of the, it now has one of the two endgame triggers that it needs. It would need uh, four more influence to make seven, or four more helium to make seven, to end the game. I don't have anything to end the game, so I really need to step it up. All right, so the Artificer says that it would score the 20 if it was with another orange, but this orange isn't all that great for me. I don't, I, it procs off of blue. I don't have a blue, so I think I'm, I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to just manipulate it a little bit. Finally get to use my Mess Hall Cook. It is deployed directly on top of a gray or orange. Move it, and then move forward on the fleet track. I like the sound of that. So then it is going to go there. I'm going to cover this blue so it doesn't less likely to get it and then move forward on this track. And then I think I'm going to, like I could acquire this card right now, but I'm going to top deck instead. Another uh, gold, Cassius, uh, 40 if with both Mustang and Darrow. Okay, I don't think I have access to either <laughs> Mustang or Darrow, that's a shame. Um, so just going to acquire it and then roll the die and I'm going to banish this card again denying it odd cards okay it's going to put a card on Mars and acquire the card off of D so it's going to acquire Helga it's right there and it is going to use the the thing on Jupiter. It was basically inevitable. Once you um, understand that it's just going to max out over here, you just need to manage the best that you can. And it actually can't go past that. So future um, procs on this, once it goes past 10, it won't get. So that's fine. Okay. Once again, it is going to take the, uh, put a card on top of Luna and take the card off of the Institute and fire off the Institute power. So it is going to do that. I'm going to get Another even card, but then use the Institute power, which is more influence. It is four to two ahead of me on influence over there. <sighs> Man, struggling. All right, I really got to step it up over here. I uh, don't know if this counts as stepping up, but <laughs> going to do stuff. All right, so I got Cassius over here. It says, uh, gain the card directly under this one. Banish Cassius unless it, the card is a gold. I am going to use that to acquire Mickey the Carver, and I'll show you what Mickey the Carver does next round. So I'm, that's 
pretty much, I think, the card I'm going to play. And then I'm going to acquire... Oh, and I banish Cassius. So bye-bye, Cassius. And I'm going to acquire Colonel Valentin. And that's actually... Up, it gets me up to seven cards, which is nice. Seven useless cards, or <laughs> three good cards, four useless ones. We'll see. Uh, I, you've already seen this card. Uh, the one that... Uh, we'll score for each goal at all locations. I got some gold working out over here, or at least one, and uh, maybe another one coming down soon. So going to acquire that, and also precious points at the Institute. All right, so let's see what the Automa does. I'm going to put a card on D and then take a card from C. So going to get a yellow out there and take this yellow. Odd, don't like that, but not much that I can do about that. I'm not gonna proc a power. <laughs> Thank you for giving me a break on that. Put a card on Jupiter, take a card from B. That's gold over there, and more influence. So I am getting very close to the end game over here. So put a card over there. Uh, putting out a gold, taking a gold. All right, as I said, I'm going to play Mickey the Carver. I am going to cover up this green, this odd card. I'm going to banish a red from my hand. I realized, I know I wanted this this red, but I realized that it would give me points if no gold. <clears throat> I'm going to have gold at the end of the game. So get out of here, red. And then I'm going to move a mill through this deck and see if I could find a gold. All right, so I milled through. I found the the Howlers. It is worth 20 points, 15 points if with servo, and then everything else goes to the bottom of the deck. This is an excellent card for me because this card also works with servo, and I am treating this card as servo. So it is double dipping, two for one, two cards that interact with this uh, orange over here. I just need to get another orange or hold on to Valentin over here and declare Valentin orange because he is uh, can be another color. Uh, so <laughs> uh, it's coming together, it's coming together. <laughs> this isn't too bad at all, feeling a little bit better about that. I think Mickey will help, so I might have to reacquire Mickey. So I know I said that I um, didn't think that this orange was gonna help me. However, I need an orange. So I think I'm just gonna just acquire that just in case the robot gets frisky and rushes the end game <laughs> before I'm ready. So then it's going to put a card on B and acquire, no, Mickey, no, Mickey. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, it's gonna put a card on B and then acquire Timony, thank you. Uh, and then not actually proc that power. Whew, come on, I want Mickey. Uh, I am going to put a card on C and take it from D. So then, ooh, another orange, gotta check that out. Uh, took this one, which is a, uh, that's fine. And I'm actually getting a little bit lucky it's not proccing as many powers as it did before. All right, next round. So we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Uh, I prefer this orange right here. It would give me extra bonus points if I had a gold and no obsidian. Uh, so I don't have an obsidian, but I do have plenty of gold. So I want it. <laughs> But I'm gonna uh, do the same thing I did before, kind of gamble a little bit, make it uh, protect this one. Don't need it. Uh, I'm gonna try to get that one eventually. I did want Mickey the Carver back because what Mickey the Carver does, it is uh, worth uh, 15 points, 10 if with a banished red, and 10 if with a gold. I do have a banished red, I do have a gold, so it's worth the maximum amount of points, so that's nice. And I also get a little bit of um, juice for the Institute. I'm now down five to four, which is not that terrible. All right, so it's gonna put a card on red and take a card from red. So that is Luna right there. I'm gonna take Sefi, the assassin. And it is maxed out on its fleet, which is kind of in a, actually, no, wait a minute. It did not proc the power. It actually banished the top card, which is Reporter. Whew. All right, I'm not gonna get used to that though. It's going to put a card on top of red and take the card from Mars. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am absolutely okay with that uh, because it frees up this card, which is the card I wanted. That's very, that's very nice. I'm getting close to the point where I'm actually happy with my hand, which is uh, very much different than what I 
was uh, even a couple of turns. All right, so I'm actually sitting decently pretty over here. Now I just need to improve. This is the only card that I don't, uh, that actually doesn't do uh, anything from besides the base power because I don't have any uh, blues. So I'm just going to play this one. Uh, there's everything's odd, so there's nothing really to cover over here. So I'm just going to put that over there, and that will. I won't proc the power. However, I will. I wanted to uh, get this card over here. This card again will score me 15 if a gold and no obsidians, which is what I have. And then I'm going to place that over here, and it, it has the benefit of getting me a fifth. Um, helium token so i am getting uh close to ending uh being able to end the game myself we'll see what happens put a card on c take a card off of b there you go and then up takes that gold that odd i don't like that and it will banish the top card another gold mustang had a couple cards that popped off a of mustang that's that's uh unfortunate then take a card, oh, put a card on the Institute, take a card off of A. So then there, it's got two odd cards this turn. Uh, <laughs> and it, oh, it progressed on the uh, flight track. So it's done on the flight track. So good thing uh, it will not proc again. It will not keep on going on the flight track. So that's nice. All right. So I like my hand. I think I'm. I think this hand is strong enough. I think I could do better than this card, but right now, uh, not really. So I am going to start moving things towards the end game, not with the uh, lead action, but the scout action. Here is the player order. So the lead action is what I've been doing the entire time, but the scout action reveal the top card of the deck, place it on any location, gain the location's bonus. Let's me mill the deck a little bit more actively, and I will continue to gather resources. Hopefully I can get some helium and some influence. That all, would all be nice. So I got Karnas right over there. i place it here uh, because I want the influence. Now tied at five, so I'll be able to get the maximum benefit there. Okay, so I am going to put a card on top of A and take a card off of Jupiter. Okay, there you go. And it takes the pathologist. It's getting a lot of odd cards at this point. <laughs> I'm really not uh, liking that, but uh, so that it will put a card on C and take a card off of C and use the Mars power. So then it will take the nanny. Ooh, look at that nanny. Uh, unfortunately for it, it takes the even token, uh, but I don't think it matters at this point. It's gonna take there. Oh man, I really have put myself in a <laughs> disadvantageous position to kind of slowly uh, uh, roll, rumble towards the ending because I actually don't have any of the end game conditions. I don't have them. I need two. I need seven of these, seven of these, or seven over there. <laughs> Nothing. All right, so I'm actually going to gamble a little bit. This is a red, and this would kind of, if I got rid of it, it would cost me a decent chunk of points. But I am, I don't want to just scout the entire time so i think i can improve my hand a little bit so we're going to put colonel valance in there and i'm going to get quietus the pilot if deployed on the institute advance once in the fleet track so it gets me a little bit more and if i can navigate influence i can uh get the bonus over here 30 so that's actually not a terrible trade uh and it lets me use the luna power which gets me get the sovereign token which is worth 10 points and I would be able to take the top card or place top card somewhere. It is 15 points. I don't like that, but I can cover just another odd number and do that. Okay. More. I'll put a card on D, take a card off the Institute. Oh, that's too bad. I think, uh, I, 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 I think investing in that, like that being a red, wasn't going to help me. And you can't do, and you just can't do everything in this game. So then I'm going to take, I'll put a card on Jupiter and take a card off of A. So then card on Jupiter, off of A. Uh, so I did, I was going to have to proc the power. So I proc the power of the Institute and of Luna. So then Luna doesn't, it actually takes Sovereign Token, but it does proc this thing. It is now at six influence. The next influence it gets, it will uh, trigger the end game. 
but I am going to respond by using quietus here. I'm going to deploy it at the institute, which would let me advance on the fleet track. And then I would get something else. I'm going to take the investor, which gets the sovereign token back. And I get the, oh, there's Servo. Look at Servo. Uh, I have you already. So then I'm going to put Servo somewhere. I'll put him on the Institute. There you go. So that was not a deploy. That was the action off of my Apollo. And let's see if the bot triggers the end game. So then I'm going to put on B and uh, take from Jupiter. Ooh, a red. That's okay. I think I can use that. If the bot doesn't take it first, I'm going to put a card on A and take a card from Luna or take a card from the Institute. No! <laughs> so put a card on A. Ah, that's true. Uh, and take a card because that it would take a card, th this card over here. Leaves me that and it would banish top card over there. I'm going to speed through this a little bit more because at this point I'm just kind of getting to the, uh, trying to get to the end game. I think this game doesn't end uh, where I need to uh, very, very quickly. Right. So I am, so the, the crappy thing is I wanted to, I wanted to play the investor and I wanted to play it here. There's three gold over here. So that would get me one helium for each card of a color. But uh, it looks I wanted to pick up red instead. But um, this is just too good. So I'm just going to put that here. And that is pick gold. And that is three helium. Very nice. Don't want that. I'm just going to top deck a card. The janitor. <laughs> uh, five for each green, yellow, and blue. All cards I don't have. So I have kind of loosened up my hand. I didn't get anything sweet. Uh, all right. I'm going to shuffle this up and then do the autumn return. Put a card on D, take a card off the Institute, and fire off that power. That will trigger the end game. So then take a card off the Institute, and that is seven influence. And the last action, it will put a card on Jupiter, take a card off of A. So moving over, it will take Arius, and then put another influence token there. And that is the end of the game. Okay, so then it would, yep, it's gotten, it's got its eight. And then I have, uh, because I'm Apollo, I get the last action of the game. So I have the Sovereign token, that's an extra 10 points. That's nice. Uh, I think I'm just gonna put down this janitor for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> if deployed directly on top of a green, yellow, or blue, move that token. You got it. So then I can move it and then move this together so that was a nice six point move and i have to try to get a red hope that's a red or a gray because that would uh, equal another couple of points it is not it is a white and it doesn't interact with anything <laughs> but it does give me points if i have the sovereign token so it did, uh, end up working out for me okay that is the end of the game let us go to final scoring all right, so final scoring time. As you can see, I've won 300 to 262. So base bot score is 70, and then it, it got uh, six points for 15 cards, which is 90 points, and then three points for five cards, which is um, five even cards. So the odd cards, I did a decent job filling its deck with uh, even cards, way more even cards than odd cards. However, the game lasted pretty long. So it was able to just get odd cards just because the game was uh, along. Uh, didn't like that, however, and I didn't like the fact that it got the maximum fleet track, but it was basically inevitable because it had two fleet actions available to it. And then everything else uh, happens, and then I got did very well with the um, the can. I basically propped every single card, the bonus on every single card. So it was worth uh, spending a little bit of extra time, and that was kind of carried me uh, carried the day for me. So uh, there are other difficulty levels, uh, basically more points for the bot uh, in its hand. So you have to score even better in order to beat it. 
Uh, I think this is a really good game. I like the IP. I like the core action. I love the Fantasy Realms. This one uh, it just, you know, continues more, more gamer buttons. It is sticking around in my collection. Hopefully you had fun with the playthrough and I have given you a good sense of whether this is a good, this game is a good fit for you. So this is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, letting you know that we will see you at the next stop.